All right, this is some DC to DC 12 volt type charging. I'm here in the back of my vehicle and I've got a power port over here uh, that I'm going to charge my normal battery with. Um, what I'm charging with today is these little, uh, this is a 12 amp hour sealed lead, sealed lead acid. I call them scooter batteries, universal batteries. Um, on top of that, I've, I've put these two-way connectors that I typically put on these batteries and put some heat shrink over the terminals because I do keep these in the back of my my trunk and uh, you know I don't want anything crossing those two circuits and uh, creating a short um, I've got this DC meter just uh, that's kind of an add-on that I don't normally keep I'm just using that for the video just to show what kind of amps measuring what kind of amps are going to come out of this when I fire it up um, I also have a voltmeter on the, the battery side over here you can see it's a relatively fresh battery uh, splitter and then I've got it in this particular example I'm doing uh, AC conversion to a normal um, battery charger for a 12 volt battery charger. This is a very low wattage, 100 watt AC uh, inverter. And then next to it, I've got what it looks like a, a laptop, you know, battery power supply, but it's actually a, a custom made. I got it from Japan. It's a three amp um, normal battery charger. It does have stages to it and stuff like that, and uh, some LEDs and stuff that'll fire up and turn green when it's fully charged and it will ramp it down to a float voltage from a bulk voltage. Um, other than that, I did put a, an amp meter in, on the outside, on the output of the battery charger, just for, I kind of like that and keep that in general, just to see what, what rate I'm charging at. And other than that, it's just a common cigarette lighter uh, plugged into the uh, power outlet in the back of my uh, truck here. These power outlets, um, mine's rated for the 20 amp fuse for the system. Um, obviously, if you want to check your vehicle, if you've got a 10 or 15, you really don't want to go very high on the, the amperage. But at 3 amps, um, not not that bad of a, a charge. It's a faster charge rate than some of your battery charger, like the 1 amp models, like the Battery Minder and the Battery uh, Tender Junior. Um, so it tends to think charge things a little bit better. Um, with my, my uh, overhead lights, my interior lights, I know it'll draw over 3 amps. I have them on right now. So let me go ahead and fire this up. The AC, the battery kicks in, and I gotta turn it on over here. And you can see I'm drawing just about three amps. Again, I know I've, I've got a fairly healthy battery in the truck, but with the overhead lights, they draw three amps. Uh, this truck has always lost the battery a little bit, but you could, you could use this in a um, boat scenario or some other scenarios, not a lot of useful um, things. Anyways, the uh, this is the draw coming out of the uh, universal scooter battery. You can see it's just about 5 amps. And of course, I know the draw on the other side, but I'll check it with a meter over here. Even though I've got a gauge telling me it's roughly 3 amps. And it's roughly roughly 3 amps. So, with the, the bad part about this is that you are doing an, a DC to AC conversion, which is losing 20% in general at this type of amperage. And um, also, the back from AC to DC in this charge converter over here, uh, you're losing another 20%. That's why you get from 5 down to 3. Basically, you're using, losing 40% to your effective amperage. Let me turn off the charge just for a second here and just see with the AC on. You can see it's running. And this is no charger, right? The charger is on, but not charging anything. It's fully charged. You're drawing uh, you know, less than half an amp. So, yeah, normally I would leave that for a few hours and let it run that way. So here I have sort of a non-traditional uh, DC to DC type charger. I have a good battery over here. This is the one I just took out of the back of the vehicle over there. It's basically fully charged and I've got a dead battery um, dead being uh, 11 and a half volts uh, these are both 12 amp hour universal sealed lead acid scooter type batteries um, you know you can hook one battery to another I would strongly recommend you never do that because uh, of the high amperage that goes between them even these 12 amp hours will kinda you know melt the wires and stuff like that it's almost like creating a short circuit between them and uh, you're not really charging a battery when you do that. You're just kind of getting one to equalize with another. Um, in general, you should only hook up batteries 
that are um, of similar in voltage, uh, otherwise you get a big voltage difference. And so that's my safety warning part of it. But here I'm going to have, um, I ordered this online, it's a, a boosting module. It's got a couple caps and a heat sink. It's rated for 150 watts, um, but really 100 watts without a, an extra fan on it. Um, so when I bought that, you know, basically what it does is it converts this lower voltage, I'll call it 12.8 uh, type, and it's going to boost it up to 14. There are, I had measured this, it is 14 coming out here. You can, with this little switch over here, a little rotator, you can set it at any voltage you want between, um, the, you know, the battery voltage up to like 36 volts or something like that. I've got it set for about 14. Um, you know, this isn't a multi-stage smart type charging, so I have to, you have to keep an eye on these things. Um, but the nice part is set into 14 is the most it'll bring it up is to about 14. Um, and that, at which point you'd have, you know, a charged battery over here, and this one would be pretty, pretty discharged. Um, but, you know, if you're going from a big bank to a small bank, or, you know, um, otherwise using this in a car or something like that, then you can charge your devices at any type of voltage you want. That's a nice part about that. Um, what I've got, what I noticed when I plugged this one initially in, is that I thought with the 100 watt or 150 watt it would have some current limiting. It does not have current limiting. Um, so I, I set forth and said, well, you know, when I, I'm going to do that demo here and I'm going to hook it up and you're going to see a nice huge amp rush, which is uh, originally I had some thinner wires and, you know, they were getting pretty hot pretty quick, something you couldn't sustain over time. So I'm, I bought some automotive uh, headlights over here. I got them on sale uh, cheap and I've wired in um, a switch and I wired in two of them in parallel and then I put another switch and another two in parallel. Uh, originally when I took one of these, these are 50 watt halogen type light bulbs. Um, and when I initially tried it, I was getting about 25 amps uh, on, the, on the hot side here and about 20 amps on a straight, on a straight hookup through this converter, which is way too many watts for this converter. It's probably going to blow this little uh, converter out uh, eventually. It's going to heat up pretty quick. But this one, one bulb at uh, 50 watts, 55 watts, was limiting it to about 2 amps. And so I did 2, and it went to 4 amps. And I thought that if I kept adding it up, I'd get to 8. But maybe my solder job is bad, or i got something else going on, or I don't fully understand these, these lamps. Um, but it, it won't go to the full 8 in my current setup. I'll probably do some additional testing. You can see i got a lot of alligator um, clip leads, because this is a very temporary type scenario. So when I, I got it hooked up, in line with the first series of lamps, I've got both switches off right now, and we're not drawing any current going through the uh, boost module. And I'm at 11.6 for the dead battery. So as soon as I flip this switch over here, we should see some current, a little surge, and then come back down to. Uh, I got two two light bulbs in place. I'm doing, um, you know, less than four amps. It is current limiting. Um, so it's not running away. You know, eventually, if you had a big disparity uh, between voltages, I guess it would. You always got to adjust and, and play with the system. You know, once this gets down low enough, I'd turn that off and just short circuit it through the through the booster, and you'd be getting only five amps or something going to the battery. You know, if you had bigger batteries, this would last longer and do that kind of stuff. I've got three on this side in the current state, basically three amps. And let's see what's going in over here is uh, 2.5 so uh, you know a smaller loss 20% loss or whatever that number ends up being I'll do the math on online uh, this is where I said I flipped the other switch and put eight, uh, four four in series and I didn't see a boost up from uh, you know doubling anything matter of fact I saw very little change I just went up to 3.2 if I turned it off click you know it drops down to three so I only got an extra little bit so I'm not sure if that's how the batteries work or if I got a bad solder job or or that's just how it works but the nice part is you know even with the two it did the nice current limiting uh, that i was looking for i could leave it at that that amperage that three amps and it would charge this battery uh, fairly nicely uh, or any set of batteries i can transfer from you know a main battery bank to one of these smaller batteries the nice thing about these is courses these are pretty portable they're not they're heavy but they're not too heavy not like a full auto battery you'd be trying to drag around at 100 pounds or something or 50 pounds um, so you could, uh, you know, run your portable electronics off that. Um, so, again, that's that setup. And, of course, the battery voltage on the dead battery, or the discharge battery, is coming up little by little here uh, because of the 3 amp that we're pushing into it.
Um, so that would eventually, you know, the resistance would equalize up at 14, uh, 14 volts and then you'd know you'd have a charged battery. Or you can watch the amps. So I've hooked up this, uh, you know, charging battery through the, just through the uh, boost to my dead battery. My dead battery was so flat that, you know, it wasn't drawing too many amps. It still uh, started off at about 6 or 7 and it's rising up. Uh, it's up at 10 amps. Uh, this is a coming off the uh, charging battery. Um, I've seen it as high as 25, you know, as it continues to, to increase in voltage um, as it comes up. And so there's obviously no, this even 10 amps is getting a little bit, uh, you're going to need some cooling pretty soon on this 100 watt uh, transformer. Well, yeah, when it gets up to 25 amps or so, uh, you're really overpowering this. And I'm, I'm afraid to leave that long term, you'd be burning it out, not to mention charging at, you know, 10.7 over here. Let's just see what we got on the input over here is 8 point something. And that's rising too. So even trying to charge at 8 amps into a 12 amp hour battery, in this case, is not the greatest thing. So again, I'd want that current limiting uh, with the light bulb effect I did. Uh, I'll go ahead and disconnect this because there's uh, no use in watching it continue to rise up in this uh, amperage until I just trust me it will hit a 20, 25 or more. Um, again, that's why you wanna, don't want to connect two batteries together. You're drawing a lot of amps. You need a heavy... Uh, heavy wiring to do that and it's just not a good idea. You're going to really destroy both batteries by discharging and charging at such a high rate. 